Hello and welcome back to Tiny Artist TV. For today's video, uh, we are doing character number 15 in my color palette challenge series where I'm taking all the color palettes that I have amassed over the past few years and turning them into characters, some of them for the first time. Uh, so today we are continuing the mini series within that series of magical heroes and villains and today we have a hero character. Now initially, um, I had this palette named a different name and because of the colors I was going to do a candy decora style fashion treatment for her but because we already have strawberry ice cream in the lineup and I felt she already kind of fit that style um, I decided to do mermaid core for this one and so we end up having this cute sort of uh, jellyfish princess type character for today's creation. As far as the creation itself, uh, as you can see, I was actually able to get the pose out pretty quickly and I did mention in the last video that I already had ideas of what I wanted to do with this character and I just needed to edit them down. But what actually happened is after I got everything drawn out and posed, I ended up adding more <laughs> to this character um, because I just felt like it was pretty basic and it's like, oh, if you're going to go magical girl, go over the top. So I add a few more bits and baubles to her towards the end, but most of what you see is going to end up being the basic character design. For the braids, yes I do use a brush because there is no way on God's green earth I'm drawing a bunch of micro braids for what is essentially supposed to be a colored sketch. Um, these are the braids from pack 1792172 on Clip Studio. This is just called the Rough Braid Brushes Pack. And I do them on a separate layer and then set them to uh, lines only and then merge them with the line art so that I can just color them in with everything else when it comes time to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, shortcuts are great. <laughs> I do kind of add in some more texture with the braids by hand, but as far as drawing all of them, no, that was not happening. Um, so now we're moving on to the rest. I'm kind of deciding what sort of nautical elements I want to add in. Again, most of them do end up getting added kind of more towards the end. A lot of pearls and glitter, um, glitter that's supposed to kind of be reminiscent of scales and things like that. And I feel like I possibly could have done more with the trident, but I didn't want the trident itself to take away from her being the center focus. Um, cause it's already kind of splitting the composition, but it's just kind of a line of interest so that the eye kind of flows in multiple directions, looking at all of the different parts of the character.
these colors were actually a little more difficult to work with than I had initially thought. Getting them to coordinate in a way that wasn't causing eye strain, getting them to coordinate in a way that actually looked pleasing. So when I first looked at this palette, I was thinking sunset in the beach. Translating this onto the character itself, um, this is the first pass through the chrome coat as I call it, and I have the color communication pretty much in the same order that it's on the palette on the side purple orange and then pink pink and then blue at the bottom and when it's actually on her it looks eh? <laughs> it's kind of a mess um so i end up doing several color flips and several different iterations of the color arrangement and i finally get it to somewhere that looks decent what i end up doing and of course you'll see this as the video goes on I end up having just the whole dress be mostly purple and pink with accents of blue and orange instead of trying to make whole color block sections flow into each other because that just was not working. And now I'm getting into the fun part. All of the chrome coat is done. All of the cleanup is done. I always do the cleanup off screen because you guys don't need to see me nitpick at edges for like 20 minutes. Um, and so her makeup is again, kind of reminiscent of scales, that kind of like shimmery mermaid effect. Um, I do a little bit on the decolletage and around the cheeks and eyebrows and it's just so cute. It's one of my favorite simple effects to do on kind of aquatic type characters. I do the same effect on the tights um, with different grades of size and color to kind of give them that shimmery scale look and just a really simple way to communicate that idea without having to do a full-blown render and then when color picking for the transparent areas I've done this enough to just be able to kind of like eyeball what needs to go where but um basically you just kind of do some color math like the areas where the pink and the blue are overlapping, well that would equal purple. The areas where the uh, blue and brown are overlapping would be turquoise. And then of course where the pink and brown overlap just gives you more of like a mauve like dark rosy pink. Um, so now I'm just messing around with the lighting. I wanted to use, again, I'm pretty much only exclusively using the colors that are in the palette. Even the skin tone is a darker version of the orange that's in the palette. So for the lighting, um, to give it that nice like kind of sun-kissed, I use an orange gradient for the lighting and then for the shading, I use the purple because as far as if you turn this into black and white, the purple would be the quote-unquote darkest color. And it also just kind of helps everything be more cohesive if you use the main color as your shading. Normally what I'll do is I will copy the color layer turn it to multiply and then turn it to a shade but with this one the shading was more subtle so what I'll usually do is I'll cut the shading out but for this one I didn't need as much and um, I did have this kind of water effect on her but she's not actually underwater so I delete that I throw on some sparkles and we're pretty much almost at the end of the character design at this point For the jewelry and accessories, I use the same technique that I used when making the sprinkles for the um, strawberry ice cream girl. I create a new layer. I do auto outline. Well, it's not called auto outline, It's but it, it creates outlines for you in whatever color you pick. And then I just drew the jewelry and accessories and kind of colored them, like added uh, lighting and, you know, kind of that like crunchy, shiny look to them um, and call it a day. <laughs> I love all the little shortcuts I get to take with CSP because that means I get to create stuff like this way faster. So that is today's character number 15. Uh, the color palette name was Jawbreaker. I forgot to mention that at the very beginning. And yeah, so this is our mermaid core magical girl in our heroes and villains uh, character creation lineup. 
hope you guys have enjoyed this video and the little tips that I kind of threw in there. If you haven't seen my other videos and have already heard me talk about these methods and tips that I usually use when I'm drawing. Um, so yeah, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy and until next time, have a weird day.